Hello and welcome to this video summarising some of the news items from 2021 that are worth looking at. These are things that made us ask what happened? How did things go so wrong? Has the education system failed completely? Or so long and thanks for all the fish. 2021 began with a rather unfortunate crash course in viruses. Specifically, how a 50% increase in virility of a strain of the CCP virus could create disproportionately huge increases in mortality. That is, if you look at how many cases are spread out over a given period, if you start to concentrate them, the number of people who are vulnerable and will be harmed most extremely by infection will begin to increase. It doesn't matter if everybody's been vaccinated or otherwise. Simply increasing virility means the virus will get to those who are at most risk that much sooner. This isn't of course just limited to humans, as was demonstrated later on in 2021. Other apes, and specifically those who aren't naked, along with just about every other animal you can think of, were being infected by the CCP virus. This included dogs, cats, gorillas, and anything else really, all the way down to small rodents and similar. The fact that apes could be infected by the CCP virus was an indication of just how effective it was at matching to the ACE receptors. This meant that it could more easily and quickly get into the system, spread, and then begin infecting others. Admittedly, it's nowhere near as bad as could be the case, given the limited number of times and places that such infections could occur. Nonetheless, not good. At the same time, Starlink was also having its own troubles. At the start of 2021, Starlink was identified as causing big problems when it came to astronomy, both for those trying to study space and for those trying to photograph it. Starlink satellites were photobombing pictures of space and getting in the way of the ability to analyse what is out in the universe. This is because the massive number of satellites they had already deployed, let alone many fold more they are going to deploy, were showing up as bright spots of light. If you were taking long exposures of the night sky, this would create streaks across it that ruin the images completely. If you were an astronomer trying to study space, these objects could get in the way of that, for a variety of reasons and ways. Whether that is their own radio signals getting in the way, or the way the satellites reflected a large amount of light and began to become very obvious, very bright spots. Going forward a little bit further into 2021, there was interesting explanations as to some of the more bizarre features of wombats. Wombats are the large marsupials found in Australia that are basically a walking brick. What is bizarre about them, apart from the fact they live in Australia, given what they are, is that their poop is a cube shape. Why and how this occurs wasn't really on anyone's radar as a major thing that needed investigation, but understanding why was always a remote cursory interest to many. And now we know why. It all boils down to the muscles in their intestines and the way they extract water to maximise longevity of the animal and try and make the poop as dry and compact as possible. This led to the rather odd, square-shaped poop. Around the same time in 2021, Facebook was also taking far more aggressive action to deal with anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists. Most of this targeted those who were peddling nonsense claims about the CCP virus, what it is, where it came from, and so on. Their actions shut down a lot of groups that were peddling this sort of information and a lot of it was bad information. This made it possible for Facebook to remove large swathes of the influences that were leading to the spread. Admittedly, this did not go without some degree of pushback, let's say. 
given the way Facebook operates, and in fact just about all social media operates, this relatively one-sided takedown of highly engaged content is not going to help them, but also it's going to remove a lot of issues they're facing with government oversight and issues around liability. In a mutually destructive behaviour, there was weird research into wood roaches, these being small insects that would eat each other's wings as they were copulating or shortly thereafter. This led to them not being able to travel and fundamentally staying around to look after the offspring. This was a first as it's not uncommon for different species to have one sex eat the other in some manner or another. It was not observed before where both sexes would eat something from the other. You would have seen things like prey mantises would eat the male's head after the female and male had copulated in order to provide the female with nourishment. Similar things in spiders. Flies and bees often only have the male surviving a relatively short time. This was a weird study and, honestly, had us wondering what was going on there that led to that evolutionary adaptation. In somewhat more positive news, and certainly something we should have taken a much stronger lesson from, influenza practically disappeared throughout 2021 while we were practicing isolation, better hygiene, and being more conscientious of spreading illness. That is, just about no reported cases in countries with developed record-keeping systems of influenza noted very high numbers or any particularly noteworthy cases. That is a really positive change. Unfortunately, it also didn't hold. As of the end of 2021, America, who had observed this exact same phenomena in the earlier parts, has begun to see a huge increase in influenza cases once more. While the decrease in things like influenza was great and very desirable, it was the other behaviours driven by the CCP virus that had us concerned. And this is one of those instances where we're asking, how did your education fail you so spectacularly? There was a huge increase in the number of calls to poison hotlines for people who had either taken the wrong thing in the wrong way, or something that should never have been consumed in order to treat themselves for the CCP virus. Things like drinking bleach, various alcohols that are not ethanol, things like ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, the list goes on, and for the most part, all of these were unproven, unsuitable, and in many cases, not even going to work as a treatment. And yet still, people were consuming them, left, right and centre in some places. While we had plenty of people doing the very dumb, we had someone who appears to have been incredibly bored while they were in lockdown. And they had to figure out just how many times you had to slap a chicken to cook it. And then did exactly that. This is one of those things where we're left wondering, why would you do this at first? Followed by an academic curiosity of, how many slaps does it actually take? It turns out, it's actually a reasonably achievable number. As a result, you can see the YouTube video linked below, where they demonstrate just how many slaps you need to hit a chicken with before it is cooked through. In less unusual news, but also more unusual news, it was a case study, but a baby born with three penises. Some species will have more than one penis. Humans do not fall into that category. Having a second is sometimes a developmental issue during embryonic development. Three is very rare and unusual. In fact, we would go so far as to say that we're not aware of any other case study that describes this particular phenomena. The same week that this particular case study came out, Spanish researchers also published their work in creating a human monkey chimera. 
Yes, this is probably bringing to your mind the same images it brings to us, that of the Chimera in Full Metal Alchemist, and you can thank us for the images shown. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite that advanced. This was a very rudimentary, very early Chimera. In fact, it never actually got to a point where it was very developed at all. It was still a relatively benign mass of cells, with no great differentiation or development. You certainly couldn't call it an embryo at that point. Despite that, they were able to make a human and monkey set of cells come together to create their chimera. A few weeks later, we had other news about essential oil use. Some people will claim that essential oils can cure anything and everything. These people are generally wrong. Essential oils are already somewhat ambiguous with different people taking that term to mean different things. There is an industrial and international standard for what it means, but many people aren't aware of this. This leads to them using a variety of oils that may be varying degrees of purity, and extremely differing varying degrees of purity. This is where the second half of that interesting news item comes in. It was the use of essential oils and the association with seizures. It would appear that some oils being used, at least semi-regularly, were associated, if not outright causing, seizures in certain individuals. Other news that should be less surprising, but is at least somewhat more interesting is the release of genetically modified mosquitoes in Florida. This is a theory that has been circulating for quite a while. Mosquitoes are a major vector for many diseases to be spread. They also act as a wild reservoir of the disease. This means individuals can pick it up and from there they will be able to spread it again. If you treat everybody who has the disease, they may still catch it from the mosquitoes out in the wild. This is a common enough issue with malaria, but there are plenty of other diseases that it can work with. This is where the release of genetically modified mosquitoes in Florida would help. By genetically modifying them in such a way that they were either unable to procreate, or even if they did procreate, the offspring would die very early after they were born. This would lead to a huge reduction in the number of mosquitoes that could carry diseases. This meant less spread and a lower reservoir in the wild of the diseases in question. That would then help to reduce the issue even further, and it would compound over time. Another experiment, if you wish to call it this, looked at tardigrades, but rather than trying to kill them by necessity, it was looking at their survivability. The way this worked was that they would fire them out of a small laser cannon and see to what speed they could survive. Yeah, this one had us lost for a while at first. Why would you need to shoot tardigrades out of a laser cannon and see what impact they could survive? It turns out it could be useful for things like spacefaring travel, where research into survivability is going to be essential. That's novel enough research, we suppose, but it's strange, still very strange. What took us more by surprise this year was the development of a tiny beating heart. Admittedly, it's not a full heart, nor does it cover all of the complexities of the cardiac system. It is just a small model of what the heart does, but the fact that it beats and is relatively complete is the important thing here. Creating an organ like this isn't an easy thing to do. Remembering that it involves multiple different cell types that all need to be in the right place and act in the right way. This experiment was able to not only get the different cell types in their place, but have them behave in the right way. By doing that, they could create a tiny model Shortly after this research, we had something similar to the research involving mosquitoes in Florida, but this time, it wasn't just modifying them. Instead, it was targeting dengue fever 
by infecting the mosquitoes with bacteria. Florida's research was based on genetically modifying them. This research worked on the idea of curtailing the species spread by sterilizing them with the bacteria that meant that they could not reproduce. The results as they were described by the researchers were extremely successful, with approximately a one-third incidence in the experimental group versus the control group of infection with those mosquitoes that had dengue fever. In a similar line of reasoning, but this time targeting food rather than the vector for infection, one set of researchers used rice and they're developing this to deal with cholera. Cholera is a very problematic disease, especially in developing nations. It's generally always waterborne and it especially affects the very young and the very old. It's something that the West has been dealing with for centuries and eventually found a way to solve through the use of effective sewer systems, safe drinking water, and sterilization techniques. Some of these are available to developing countries, some are not. The trial here used participants from Japan and they found that if they gave them the rice that had the necessary elements in it to stimulate the immune system, they were able to get IgG and IgA antibodies that were of a high enough concentration to protect individuals. This also came with the benefit of not having any notable serious adverse events. While experimental treatments are all well and good, if we have things like vaccines for cholera that we can already treat effectively, what is the big need? Well, we've already mentioned how things like that can benefit developing nations. But what about developed nations? This is where the next piece of news came in. It was an artificial heart implant that was being trialled in 10 patients in the USA. It's a technology that had already been approved in Europe. The idea with this is that the artificial heart wasn't a permanent cure-all. Rather, it extended the duration in which a patient could wait to get a heart transplant. This meant that you could get a heart from further away and be able to transplant that where previously someone may have died well before it arrived. While medical technology like this is great, it's the other medical news around this time that was somewhat more disconcerting. While America was still dealing with the CCP virus on a large scale, parts of California were experiencing plague amongst chipmunks. Although it's not uncommon for various animals to pick up diseases and they become commonly found within the species, some are more aggressive than others. This leads to the obvious outcome of those animals dying off and the spread stopping. Plague and a few other diseases tend to crop up regularly and consistently amongst various species. Observing it in somewhere like California, and amongst chipmunks, was a bit of a worry. 2021 did see some interesting reproductive news. There were two noteworthy pieces. One was the development of an antibody-based contraceptive. For the most part, contraceptives as they are now, generally work around the principle of either being a physical barrier, or tricking the female body into thinking it's already pregnant via hormones. For the most part, neither of these are perfect, but they both have a very high success rate. This of course does leave a small gap in which pregnancy may still occur. Both of these techniques are roughly 99% effective. Because of this, there are still other options being looked into primarily in part to take the onus away from women and put it onto men as well. That's where the antibody-based contraceptive comes in. It was relatively effective and can be improved considerably going forwards, and it would, as mentioned, provide yet another way to try and prevent unwanted pregnancies. Admittedly, if you are a Sardinian shark, you may not get a choice in the matter. 
a shark in Sardinia gave virgin birth. It's not unheard of for sharks to give virgin birth because of the way they can reproduce. Generally speaking, they can produce offspring that are fundamentally the same as themselves. By doing this, they're able to continue the species even if there is a relatively low number in the members of the population. This is extremely useful if you are in an adverse environment. For example, being eaten by a much larger predator fish, the miraculous conception of the shark is interesting, and perhaps we should start a cult dedicated to the virgin shark. Going back to solid research and reality, but very cutting edge research. Blindness is something that is generally untreatable. Once you are blind, you stay blind. Except in this case when you can have a brain implant that returns some degree of vision. The brain implant is admittedly quite a substantial implant. It's very experimental and it requires quite some time to train various parts of it so the brain can understand what it signals it's receiving. Despite that, the research was able to very clearly and very effectively show that you can return some degree of eyesight back to those who are blind. Research that was not necessarily cutting edge, but rather very retrospective. It was looking at the human papillomavirus vaccines. These are the vaccines that have been distributed both to young males and females for a number of years now, in females to reduce the incidence of cervical cancer. In males, Things like testicular cancer can be reduced, if not entirely mitigated. At least amongst women, we have the longest running data because that's where it was primarily targeted. Reduction in cervical cancer rates dropped by 90% since the widespread dissemination of the HPV vaccine. 90% reduction is a ridiculous and really impressive margin. The fact that it's not 100% does raise some questions about things like uptake rates, other causes, whether or not certain cohorts or age groups haven't taken it or have lost the opportunity to be protected, but overall, that is still a ridiculous reduction that should make anyone happy. In other, let's say ridiculous news, there was a record set for the coldest temperature at which you could keep water and not have it freeze. Your mind might immediately assume that it's obviously 0 degrees Celsius and how close can you get to that? But no, it's actually negative 44 degrees Celsius. For those of you who insist upon using imperial numbers, that is negative 47.2 degrees Fahrenheit. This was done using a variety of different techniques they kept a small water droplet liquid despite being below freezing. Other somewhat record setting research was actually conducted by the US Army, or at least the Walter Reed Research Center. This research was looking at developing a vaccine, which, given the year, should come as no surprise. The research itself focuses on SARS and the CCP virus variants. The technology itself, though, is able to be extrapolated to a variety of other diseases and other things for which we can develop vaccines. The technology is novel and unique. It creates a soccer ball-like shaped object. The object can have up to 26 different antigens present on its surface. That is 26 different possible things you can mount on it that would generate an immune response. That means one vaccine that could, in theory, stimulate immunity to 26 different diseases. That is a very powerful tool, especially for those who either have a weakened immune system, or somehow or other can only access a limited pool of vaccines. In a similar vein to limited access, but quite the opposite at the same time, 
Calgary has now decided to reverse its decision in which it removed fluoride from its water supply. About 10 years ago, Calgary in Canada voted to remove fluoride from its town water supply. At the time, this was interesting, primarily because it created a control sample where you had a period before fluoridation, during fluoridation, after fluoridation, and now with fluoridation once more. From this, you could see the different changes in things like cavities and similar. This meant you could definitively state if there was, to start with, any benefit to the fluoride, but also if there are any side effects. That is, is fluoride in town water going to produce anything that is adverse? The study results are relatively straightforward. Fluoride is beneficial and there are no notable adverse events. This no doubt contributes heavily to Calgary's decision to reintroduce fluoride to their water supply. A decision that may be regretted later on is that of the Chinese government blocking imports of British beef. What's happened is relatively simple. There was one case of mad cow disease or prion disease, Kruzov-Yakov disease or whatever you know it as in British cattle. China locked down all imports of British beef as a consequence. Prion disease is quite serious and getting it in the population makes it almost impossible to get it out of the population once more. So China's reaction, while aggressive, isn't unreasonable. Unfortunately, this also sent shockwaves through the British beef industry. They had been trying to export beef to China, and China has a relatively high demand for beef. This meant that both sides of the equation were benefiting from it. At the moment, neither side is getting the benefit. There was one final piece of research from 2021, and it was also a similarly mutually beneficial arrangement. It involved the creation of a weird symbiotic tadpole algae creature. Algae is a plant-like organism that, once it is exposed to sunlight and water, produces oxygen. Algae is the major producer of oxygen on Earth. By creating a symbiotic creature, which has tadpoles and algae together, the tadpoles did not need to have access to atmospheric oxygen, so long as they had access to light. The algae was able to generate oxygen inside the tadpole and allow it to breathe without ever having to actually breathe. As you can see, 2021 was a relatively dull year for many. Lockdowns, quarantine and isolation is not a recipe for excitement. That has not stopped people from creating other news that raised all kinds of questions, horror and praise. Hopefully 2022 will be interesting, but far less virile. If you're interested in this sort of news, each week we publish one video which summarises the events for that week. Some of these articles and news items have come directly from those videos. If you are interested in 2022's news, feel free to subscribe and you'll be notified when these videos go live. Thank you for watching. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions that you have below.